Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to add stitching detail to our models in Substance Painter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on my glove here. And this is what we're going to be adding stitching detail to. All right. And the first thing I want to do is within this glove folder is create a new folder and I'll drop it right inside of gloves and I'll just call this stitches. All right. And in this stitches folder, I'll go ahead and create a fill layer and drop that right inside of stitches here. Now everything inside of this gloves folder is only going to affect the gloves, which is why we have this uh, root level or parent level mask right here. So with this fill layer, I'll just call it, you know, stitch layer, and this will be our main uh, key layer. All right. So what I want to do now is disable, I won't need any metalness or roughness. We'll just need color, height, and roughness. So for color, this is going to be the color of the stitch. Right now, I'll set it to something that's going to be pretty obvious to see. We can maybe do like a, if we have brown leather for our glove, maybe add something that's just blue. I can change that later. All right. And once I do that, I want to go ahead and crank up the roughness. And then for height, this is going to be the height of the stitch. So I'm going to increase that to, let's just do something nice and even like 0.2. All right, now I'll go ahead and add a black mask to this stitch layer. All right, so now you can see that I can start adding uh, detail into this black mask. Now, in order to do that, I need to right click this black uh, layer and do a paint. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now. You can see if I start painting, so if I control right click, drag to the left, to lower the size of that. And then you can see, let's just do a quick test. Great. So we can see that we are painting now in this layer, which is exactly what we want. All right. So what I want to do now is in this paint layer within this mask is scroll down here and we want to go to and go and change our alpha. All right. So our alpha is going to change to, if we just type in stitch, you can see that I have quite a few stitches in here, but this is the one stitch generator. This is the one that default comes with substance painter. So you can, everyone can use this as they're following along. And if I go ahead and again, just start painting, you can see, cool. We got this nice stitch uh, coming in here. All right. Now, just to take a quick look, these are my UVs, so I do have a few things on here. And this is also the quality of the stitch or the resolution is dependent on the UV space. So if I wanted this to have, you know, more resolution and more detail, then I would just need to give it either more UV space or uh, increase the texture resolution. And I'll be able to increase the texture resolution here later on export. All right, so if I hit F2, I can jump back to my 3D view. Now, let's get to the painting, okay? How do we actually want to paint this where it looks like stitches? What we need to do is, if I go to the properties, right here, let me scroll up, and I have my stitch generator assigned, I want to go here to follow path, all right, at the top. So if you enable follow path, that's going to be good. And then you can see it's starting to at least go in the direction of my mouse stroke, which is great. So the next thing that we need to change is the spacing. As you increase the spacing, take a look at what's happening here in the properties. Okay. As I increase that, the spacing between the stitches starts to increase, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to go ahead and set this to about a hundred. Okay. Then I'm going to set the size to somewhere between one and two. And I'll just go ahead and do two so it's a little bit easier to see as I'm recording this. All right, now that I've got that, let's go ahead and drag. And there you go. We can now start to paint the stitches on our model. Now, you want to make sure to also have, you can see that you have alignments here. And you can do, I work typically with tangent wrap. And if I switch it to camera, we can kind of see it gives me pretty good results, but it's on the areas that it curves curves a lot. Um, it starts to project weird. So that's why, you know, you may want to switch between tangent wrap and then camera. So you can see it's a little bit better here, but are any areas that are going to be, you know, moving 
at more extreme angles or concave like this, you're going to want to kind of do it in multiple passes. Now, the next thing that you can do is go ahead and use this tool here called Lazy Mouse. Lazy Mouse is great because what that does is gives you a nice steady stroke. It's just like the Lazy Mouse in ZBrush if you're used to that. And then we can see the following is working pretty well. All right. And you can continue to work your way around and move our way down. Now, the good thing is we don't want this to be like, like it was done mechanically, right? We want this to look like it was done by hand and done organically. So you can see sometimes if you struggle a bit with getting the stitches to work well in the uh, 3D viewport, what you can do is hit F3 to jump to the texture viewport. So you have F1 for both, F2 for 3D view, and then F3 for 2D view. And then what you can do is come down here and we can start to paint in the UVs. So this is obviously dependent on if you have good UVs. So if I go ahead now and just start to paint here, now what's gonna have to happen is I will need to reduce my distance uh, for lazy mouse, maybe to even something like one or two. And then now I can go ahead and paint here. And this is gonna be based off the UVs. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of finish that there. All right, so I'll hit F2 again, and there you go. It stitches really well uh, ac across, okay? So these are just a couple of examples. What I highly recommend is to take a look at reference, okay? You wanna make sure to put your seams in areas that make sense. Um, you can see that I've got one from Wreck-It Ralph here, and you can see how the stitches are and the seams are added here. And here's just some samples from ArtStation, online, and Google. Um, so make sure to always refer to reference. And once you've done that and you have an idea and you've planned where you want your seams to be, we can continue to move on, okay? Now, like I said, we can always change the color of our stitches. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead now and change this to something, you know, that's a little bit closer to the brown leather glove. Maybe if it was a little bit more orange, red, brown-ish, um, we can we can do that. Um, we don't want it to be too like two toned or, but it can be whatever you want. All right. Okay, and so I'll kind of work with this dark orange uh, here for the stitches, and the roughness can be a little bit higher. And then as if we want to increase the stitching height we of course can now i'll leave that at point two and what we can do if we go back to this black mask is add a filter and then we can add a sharpen now a sharpen is really nice because that'll get a little bit more detail in our stitches so you can almost start to see the thread coming through and once we export to 4k that'll come out really nicely now this is looking um, good. What you can also do to give this a little bit more depth is to duplicate the layer. Okay, so if I go to stitch layer, we can just call this stitch shadow. And this will give us a little bit more depth on our stitches. So if I go to the filter here, the black mask, I want to right click, and then I want to add a new filter. And this time, I'm going to add a blur. And what this is going to do is going to give us like kind of a, sh a fake shadow, but it's going to look really good. So you can see adding that shadow uh, helps out a bit. And if I go back to the base color, I can set this to be more of kind of this uh, black here. Now, what I typically do is just put the stitch layer on top. So we have the correct order. And then we have the stitch shadow here on the bottom. And then you can, if you want to even push this in, to give it a little bit of an inset there. Um, if that's a little bit not the direction that you want to go, you can just keep the height up here to give that more of that shadow look uh, that you want. And then the roughness is fine. I mean, frankly, we don't really need roughness here. And then back to the height, we can just kind of keep that at, you know, point two. And then you can always play with like the opacity if you wanted to drop that uh, down a bit. 
to lower the strength. Okay, so there's that technique for adding stitches. So I, I showed you how to paint it in 3D, paint it in 2D. Uh, there is another cool one, uh, another cool technique that you can use. If I duplicate this stitch, I'm actually going to hide uh, all of my stitching and I'll call this uh, auto stitch. And what I want to do here because I want to keep all of the these settings good, is go to the black mask and I will go ahead, right click, add generator. And I actually want to remove, or we'll just disable these for now. And then in the generator, look at that, auto stitch. So you can add auto stitch and look at that. It goes ahead and creates automatically a, a stitch. So if I hit F1 though, you can see what this is based off of. This is based off of the UVs. So if you if you prepared your UVs in such a way that it makes sense to just have the the stitch and the seam go based off that, then then you're good to go. Um, and in this generator, of course, if I go ahead and hit F2 to focus on 3D view, I can go ahead. You can adjust the path position, maybe tighten it a little bit more towards the seam, and you can increase or decrease the size. So this is definitely a little bit more procedural and you can increase the width, make them a little fatter or also increase the length. Okay. So you definitely have a lot of control here and then jitter make, gives it that, you know, less perfect again, makes it look like it was done by hand. All right. Now you can also change the mode. You can see UV mask here. Curvature doesn't really work well for what I'm trying to do. And we have custom input where you can put in a custom map. But right now we'll just stick with UV mask. And what you can also do is add a paint layer and essentially combine the two. Um, and you can also kind of paint things away. So if I give myself a little bit more room here so you can see this paint. And I can set this to be, you know, just a soft brush here. So let me go ahead and choose an alpha and I just want to scroll down to get a soft blurry brush. So I'll just simply type in shape and we can get one of these shape uh, soft brushes here and you can see I can make this bigger Hold control right click. I'm going to lower the spacing because I'm just going to be painting away detail here and if I want I can start painting away some of this, but I need to do that by using uh, a black grayscale. So you can see, you can just straight up just delete that uh, by painting black. So painting, painting black mask on top of the auto seam. And then I can just jump to my 2D view. I can actually just hit F3 and you can just go ahead and start to paint that away. Um, there you go. So then now we can we have that uh, if we wanted to paint some of those seams away. All right. Uh, something to keep in mind as well is you can definitely do this with symmetry on. So that way, if we have it on one glove versus the other, you can see that uh, that is applied uh, there. OK, so uh, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. So that's it. Hopefully these techniques helped and showed you how to effectively create some stitch and seam details on your model. Um, so with that, good luck everyone, and I'll see you later. Bye.